Hey, good morning, everybody. This is the professor with Day Trading for Success. I actually just said good morning to you a few minutes ago. I jumped right into another video that um, Alan set up this uh, stock for us this morning, and uh, Charlie's here handling things as well. So we could just jump right over from my uh, GameStop uh, video, which I believe that you've already seen. Um, to this video, which would be slightly delayed. So we will be trading the RV strategy again today with a group of us here. Um, today, we're going to be trading Dell 1000 shares. We'll be following the, the strategy pretty clearly. This rated a six on the criterium scale for the RV stocks. Please read this disclaimer. I am not a licensed financial advisor. This is an entertainment channel trying to show you tips and tricks through video demonstrations to help you learn to day trade. So we have uh, a bunch of different strategies that we show here and we promote a few books for other authors too which I will bring up in a minute so make sure you read that so basically the RV strategy is a range bound strategy please don't be uh, worried about these lines I'm going to explain them to you you don't necessarily have to have the same setup that I do here but I like to have tight channels and that's why it's designed this way but a lot of people just the second they see this, just go, oh, my God, it's too much for me. I don't want to watch this video. But it really is a very effective strategy. came out um, March of last year, and a lot of uh, professional traders immediately embraced it. But then um, it was really designed for beginners because it's a range-bound um, for large cap stocks over a $25 billion uh, market cap, $1 billion float and it's supposed to be moving very slowly, but at distance, and that's why it's called RV, like the motor vehicle RV. Um, so once you get into understanding the strategy, and there's the, a book, Day Trading Volume 1 has that. I'll have a link to it. Um, that's by the Million Dollar Margin Club, as well as there's a couple other books they put out. I have a link to about um, the Trading Pattern Playbook, which actually is the only book that rates the stock pattern, so that's definitely and a whole bunch of collaborative information from a bunch, bunch of different um, traders are put in there and they're called out in the book, as well as the 66 candlesticks to candlestick mastery or something. Anyway, all three of those are linked, as well as Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas and Best Loser Wins by Tom Hogart. Five books I highly endorse that you should write, uh, you should read. I'm sorry, I got distracted because I see this is breaking the ATR level. So I am very interested in that happening right now, guys. Um, this is a little early to go in, but let's keep an eye on that because that would be normally where I might go long. So um, let's just see. Uh, yeah, kind of. we're going to kind of miss that trade because I bet this goes up. <laughs> it's just Whenever you see an ATR level hit, it usually reverses the stock. Not you. I have to be careful with the word usually. Anyway, what is this? Um, layout. This is a one minute chart with the famous scalping indicator that we offer for free on this channel. This is a script that I've done. The red are the buyers, the green, I'm sorry, the red are the sellers, the green are the buyers, the blue is the volume. And this is the sentiment within the candles as it's happening live. So it really tells you when you can jump in and jump out based on this information. So this has become a go to for most scalping people. And it's and it's free right here on this channel. Um, also, you get the, uh, the down here is the day trading start chart minimized. This is the level two. This is the active trader. This is the um, 15 minute chart, five minute. Another. Uh, this is the news. This is another five minute for the spy. This is a five minute, a one hour and a four hour all minimized. These all have a purpose to set up the strategy, which has already been set up. Uh, because I was trading a different stock earlier this morning, but now we're going into the RV st strategy, which starts a half hour after market open. So I'm running behind, so I'm talking a little fast because we're going to get into trading in just a few minutes. But basically, it's a range-bound strategy to go over a little bit of it. You look at the close of yesterday, which these are all day candles, and you see that to the right of my picture, that was $135.02. And then down here is the average true range of the stock over a 14-day period. It says 7 there, but when I go back over this candle, you see it says 823. So you divide that by 2. You subtract half of it from the close, 
which is up here to get the ATR low, and then you add half of it from the close to get the ATR high. So there's your range between here and here. You expect price action to basically move. So it's, this is a range-bound strategy. So you're looking for it to move within the range. So when it starts to get out of it, that's telling you that it's a trend. So almost immediately when it starts to get out, it kind of bounces back in or it becomes a different strategy. But a lot of people trade range-bound. So that's kind of how that works. How do you figure out all these lines inside? Well, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. The Fibonacci levels are done on a 10-day back. Five-minute 10 day you find the high and the low now this has happened after i'm <laughs> that alan marked these but um so and then it opens up nature's mathematical formula these yellow lines and those are lines that people really respect you do that again on a uh, another five minute chart down here on a two day back five minute and you can see that's two days back the same thing again uh, and that gave us a bunch of different support and resistance lines in between. It's hard to see here, but the green and the red double triple lines are the range we're trading in. You can see that the price action does hover around these, even though they're marked from days before, 10 days before, because people respect it. What are why do candlesticks stop at a certain place? Nobody knows exactly, but we do know the second they do and the second that they go the other direction, they're creating historical data that we want to know about. Now, the RV strategy says you start with a four hours chart and you try to find within the ATR range the areas where that candlestick is turned around. But if there's not enough levels for you to trade within, then you go down to the one hour. And if there's not enough from that, you go to the 15 minute and then finally the five minute. Uh, Alan did all that for us today and found that it was the 15 minute again. Um, so uh, every wick and body that's sort of and sort of subjective to match them up uh, has been marked so that we make channels in here. And when you're trading on a one minute chart, you'll see that these really aren't in your way and they're they're guidelines. So we, we need guidelines, guys. So um, these are going to give us guidelines in here is also the volume profile. There's a video on how to do that set for intraday. This is the magnet. It helps you see where price actions going to be most of the time. So you can try to follow it along with the scalping indicator. So these are all tricks that professional traders use. So if you're not a little bit intermediate, this is probably seeming just too difficult to follow. But there's so many videos on this channel here that break it down or if you buy the book, it literally goes step by step for this particular strategy anyway. So I'm getting ready to trade, guys. This is a five-minute chart that looks very jumbled up. This is the one-minute chart I'll actually be trading in. This is the 15-minute. I like to look at the bigger picture as well just so we can make sure we're not um, – missing uh, a bigger move while we're getting messed around with a little move here. And, um, you know, I've, he's already checked out the SPY. Normally I do all this stuff with you guys, but we're running a little bit behind. So I'm going to now, I'll be calling the ball for all the people trading live with me today. And I'm getting ready to do that because we go in a half hour after market opens on the New York Stock Exchange in the United States. So, um, that's how the strategy calls out, or maybe a few minutes before or a few minutes after, depending on, usually it's a few minutes before. I rarely wait. I just take a take a take uh, my best educated guess as to which way the stock's going to go. So we're trading 1,000 shares. I have 1,000 max loss per trade. Remember, always have a trading plan. Always seek the advice of a licensed uh, financial advisor. Don't just try to start to do this stuff. But if you start watching the video archives with all the different RV strategies, you're going to get a feel for this and then trade in a simulator and make sure it works for you. You can be trading 10 shares. You don't have to trade a thousand shares um, to, to uh, have this work for you. So, so um, looking at the even dollar, this, this stopped it right here. So buyers have been dropping right here, guys. And it's, if it bangs off that upper level of the volume profile, I'm looking to go short here. If everybody's ready, I'm just going to go in right now. I'm going in short off of that. I didn't even look up there, but I assumed it. <laughs> there's nobody in that chair. Well, okay, whatever. So everybody takes their own trades. Uh, everybody got in, I think, but one person. So 
um, if they wanted to follow me along. So um, I got in a minute and a half early, roughly, uh, based on this being a pivot point that I wanted to turn around from, which is a Fibon There's also a Fibonacci extension on here. So this is a little complicated for a beginner trader. But what, what we've done is we've marked support and resistance lines that for the most part, we believe we can respect. So I respected this double line and the top of the volume profile area pointing down. So as the price action went up there, I felt there was a better than average chance that it would drop off of that level. OK, so that's all the indicators I looked at, including the scalping indicator with the buyers going down. Now, sellers are taking over, you can see, and I'm hoping that will continue. We just hit the point of control right here, which could stop it. But I see some price action below it. Now, this is previous information set from 4 a.m. to today and then averaging out the price action from 4 a.m. till right now uh, on today's intraday. So. A lot of people are watching this and doing the same thing that we're all doing. See that big fat coming in here that telling you that this point of control most likely is going to pull down and we're going down. So everybody's on that move, right? Yeah, that happened right at 10. So um, 10 o'clock our time. Nice. Nice. So um, you'll see me reverse down here. Nice. How low is that going to go? I'm looking at the 139 even maybe to reverse. Is that it? Yeah, I'm just going to reverse there. I think I missed it. Um, I could have got a better one off that ATR. Oh, now is it going back down? Now it's going down. Darn it. Of course. Yep. Seemed like it was just going to start going back up. So uh, I should have waited a second longer. I could have probably got about 1400 bucks on that trade. But, you know, it is what it is. So right now we're still ahead. It's green. It's nice and green. And I'm not in the best position here to go back up. I could have been down here riding this back up on a swale. Um, Sellers dropped a little. Kicking myself. Some of you guys probably got a little bit better position there. But 139.34 long. So I'd be looking up into here, maybe to the point of control to reverse. Which is about 50 cents or so, depending. But there is some price action above it. Oh, there we go. Is that uh, almost got right up there? I'm looking at the market maker right here. Is it reconciling? It seems like it is. I'm going to reverse right there. It seems to be stalling. I'm on a short now, hoping that it's going to go back down from that point of control. But now I'm not sure. Darn it. I missed it. That's a bad trade. Is I going to get a pullback here? Or am I, I'm going to have to take a loss here. Wow. Just not calling them 100% this morning. I'm a little distracted. Starting a little later than I'd like to. I'm actually going to take that. <laughs> that loss because it looks like it's going to keep going up so I'm going to take that loss I'm at 139.99 still staying over a thousand barely made a couple of bad choices there I should have just kept riding that up it was nice and strong as you can see here now it's still it's still hit 100% there a minute ago still an upward move that I, sh I got out of a little too soon so let's wait for it to get up by the point of control guys I mean, not the, the, the extension and the volume, upper volume profile. Point of control is now a support. So let's see if it can get up there again to $140.50, $140.50 roughly, give or take. 
140, 57, I mean, roughly there it goes. See, this is why I turned around, because it's just very strong moving up, you know. So I want to see this say at least 50 cents here, maybe more, before I reverse this time. Try to get back some stuff I lost here. Now we, we trade for about 30 minutes this strategy. It's definitely very sensitive. Still, buyers are going down in volume, so it's getting ready to turn around. It's going to go up to that 50 cents or not. There was 45. Oh, that was 60 for, whoa, 65. So is it going to go all the way up to that fib, uh, that other um, Fibonacci up here? Let's see. I've got 140.65 short. Feeling pretty comfortable with that position because I was going to short here. So I got a little bit higher to short off, which was good. Um, assuming it, it does what I want it to do, which is go back down. So now if we were going to call the down, we call, we'd look for more like the point of control area here unless it pulls up which the longer now this is a tweezer move going down so know your candlestick pattern so that if that closes like that that's a strong move to go down so then we'd look for it to, to go to at least the point of control maybe might even hit it before it closes so let's see what happens here hit 140 Looking at that even dollar again. I'm looking at the even dollar. It seems to be slowing down a bit. Buyers are coming back up down there. So we don't want to see the buyers win out when I'm in a short position. So looking for 140. That's a psychological. What did I get it at? 07. I got it at 07. So I broke 2000. Now, I am going through the uh, Charles Schwab's own exchange, so to speak, their own dark pool. I will always get filled with no um, partials on market, but the price sometimes is on the far spectrum of what you want to see it uh, versus ask and bid because of that. They say they try to equal what is happening on the normal exchange, but I kind of feel like that is not happening. <laughs> so uh, it's just me from watching that, from doing this for a while now. But I, the idea of always getting filled is it's just so much more important to me. Just the other day, I was doing the asking bids on the open exchange, and I was getting partials, or it would come down, and you'd see your your price right here just all lit up, and it just wouldn't pick it up. You know, then suddenly it popped down, and you know, just like ah. So, you know, you just want to get in when you want to get in. I'm calling it right, but if I don't get in the position, then I got a problem. So, um, 4007. So, here's where my my uh, position is. So, we're looking to go back up again. Maybe up to this, at least to this fib, and maybe to the next fib. It got all the way up here before. So, let's see. You're not going to see me take a short... Uh, you know, often I will take trades where I believe the distance is it's still going the way I want, but I'll try to catch a little scalp as it's going up. And those are the ones that really burn me. Sometimes I do them really well, and other times I don't. Um, lately, I don't. <laughs> so I'm going to stay with this move until I feel the actual move is telling me, rather than just a little pullback, that it's turning around. So I believe it's going to at least retrace up to this tweezer move. The tweezer move did exactly what it was supposed to do. The length of the candle to the left of the tweezer. There it is. It, that pattern was called out for us. This is pulling this point of control up. See all this price action? That's going to pull this up. Watch it in a second. That's what should happen. And then it'll be like a springboard for this to go up. Right now, it's not really winning out. It's kind of consolidating here. But So I'm a good position 
I'm in a good position to not at least be down why that's happening. But if this keeps coming in, this is going to pull the point of control right up. So let's see what happens here. And then I'll feel confident to ride it up into here, at least up into this area. It's all a matter of knowing the strategy, knowing your candlestick patterns, setting up your platform correctly. All these platform layouts are free. They're on so many videos, and more, some, of, some of the most recent ones have this one. Um, all the custom scripts, there's 10 of them available on episode 83, but the newest scalping indicator has been made available in the last, you know, three to 10 episodes. Um, so you might want to get the newest one, um, as well as how to set up your charts, how to build this platform. There's a couple of videos on that. Just type in what you're looking for, and most likely the video episode will pop up. How to see which way the market's going, how to speed up your platform so your candlesticks move smooth and fast. Here we go. Okay, so it hit that first fib. So I'm determining whether to stay in it, depending on what happens here. I'm surprised this hasn't pulled up. That's giving me less confidence, thinking about reversing with the, around the 400 here. But um, kind of like to see it get up here where it was. I'd like to see that point of control pop up to get what well, didn't pull up. So that could be the end of the, oh, it blew right through that. So now it's going up to the 69. Wow. Okay, guys. Point of control still not pulling up, which means this is the end of this move unless we see that go up. Be careful here. I'm getting ready to reverse. That's probably the high. Let's see if it blows through that. If it blows through, it'll go right to the next level, probably in a split second, because there's nothing stopping it as far as a historical support or resistance. But it seems like it's stopping right there. There it goes through it. Just a hair. Wow, I'm going to take that. 41.10. All right, I thought I got that, but it fell off of it for me. Now, I don't want to see it break that. Now, the fact that this didn't pop up, did that pop up? Did that just move up? It didn't move up, right? Um, the fact that that didn't move up um, makes me think it is going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to lose. I thought it was going to stop here, honestly. Um, so let's see if it can get back down into the... Uh, wow. Wow. I'm going to play off that fib, I think. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to reverse off that fib. So I got it at 14066 long. I banked what was there. I I I played it off this fib and that other one. Shorter move. Yeah, it seems to be stopping right here at this other fib. It's consolidating. Wow, this thing's turning around. I'm going to take it there. Oh, two. I thought I was going to get it at 09. Um, so yeah, I, I jumped the gun a little bit. So this seems to be making sort of a flat top. And I was trying to catch that above 10, 10 cents, like within a few cents of this. But I got much lower than I thought I'd have there. So this might be the channels that we're dealing with, guys. It's slowing down from the uh, uh, earlier volume. We're slowly, we're slowly stair-stepping up. Our goal was 5K. I think Alan found a good stock, Dell, here. We've traded this before. 
think he's got the channels a little tighter than I would have set them maybe, but he went down to the 15 minute. Right now it's helping to see these levels. And the extension was a really good idea because th those levels are helping me as well. Yeah, is it going to just stop here or is it going to break this? These are very tight to keep trying to make. So it concerns me a little to keep trying to catch these. Down here and up, maybe. Here we go. What's the guy's doing up there? Now it's bouncing on the 9 moving average. Let's see if we can get us down to the 20. That would be nice. Now it's hitting that fib. This is a good trade already. So you can break 140.50 and give us a little bit bigger range on these channels so we're not so tight. 140.50. Now, 140, there was 140.50, 46, 43, 37. Looking at the market maker. 40 hit 30 for a second. I'm going to take that. What is that? 28. I thought it was 34. For once, it went the way I wanted. All right. So I stopped it before the point of control and before the even dollar quite a bit up on this line. So I don't think that's my best position to go. It's a good position to go one way or the other. It's not my best position if it's going long. I think it's too soon. Um, and if it's going short, then I have to turn around. <laughs> uh, but I was trying to catch the rebound like I always do here. So um, I'm going to take that up that 140.52. Okay, so much higher volume on the sellers and the buyers, as you can see down here. So um, unless that really creeps up right now, and of course, that's what it's doing. Right when I buy it, I got it at 140.52 short. You see, it's, it was stair-stepping up with higher highs. Now, let's see if it starts to make higher lows here on the way down. Lower highs, higher lows, lower highs, whatever. Um, see, right at this point of control is interesting to see if we have a little channel here or if it's going to see how much price action is below that. And this big one that came across didn't pull it up. Or if it did, I guess it did. I missed it, huh? Because it seems higher. It seemed like it was down here. I Oh boy, Charlie coffeed me up before I switched over here, but uh, I still don't feel 100% awake, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Got some good trading going on over there. see quite a few people over 5k which is good we made our 5k let's not lose it okay so it broke the point of control there's price action down here this might actually pull it down which would give us confirmation to stay short that's a really good move down there so everybody stays short right All right, guys, excuse me. I feel more talked out than usual, and I have a whole a bunch of meetings to go to, so. Um, a little honey for the throat, some good organization, and I'll be fine. And we'll make 400k on GameStop. <laughs> oh God, I hope those guys don't burn us. I don't know about the whole roaring kitten thing, and I don't know. Usually, don't do a meme stock. Everybody here wanted to do it, so we're just like, okay, 
I'll do it with you. I'll talk me into it. I really am not great at assessing them. That's the other problem. I mean, I'm going by what other people say. So, wow, wow, here we go. You know, as far as a swing, whoa, is that it? Is it going to try to get down to this, uh, this fib here? Or is it turning around right there? That is a strong downward move right there. Nice trade already. Nice trade. Excuse me. Take my hand off the button for a minute. And go for some coffee. Nice coffee. Strong and black. Nice coffee. And I grew up in the Bahamas. That was definitely a phrase that was going around for our girlfriends, strong and black. <laughs> it could be taken the wrong way, I suppose, but it was totally innocent when I was a kid down in... <laughs> really, in our, in our uh, group, I was really the only white... Whoa, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, it went down. It tapped down here for a second. Sellers weakened here. See what happened here? Volume. So this, oh, point of control pulled down. I didn't even see it happen. Okay, so that's going to tell me it's going to go lower. I was just telling you I'm thinking of, of reversing, but that could punch it down to this next extension here that's an extension actually um so let's let's take a look and see if it can break the vwap you also have the vwap right here so I'm, i've got enough in this trade where i can i can take a chance and see if it can get down a little lower here i would definitely turn around either here or here at the furthest down i i don't think i'd wait for the atr but i can just flip right back again if it keeps going strong with the magnet pushing it down is is a good idea is good good it's a good idea to hold it longer, is what I'm trying to say. Let's see. Looking at that price action, it's all over the board. I'm looking at the market maker. Getting, I'm getting very ready here, guys. I'm kind of twitching on the button. Look at it go. So is it gonna, it's breaking. It's right at that extension. See it turn around. Oh, is that that was a shadow wick? Can it break that? That was a lot of sellers. One out on that volume. Ah, oh, that I think that was it. Darn it. One last chance. Can it break that with that little hammer move? That's a hammer. I'm gonna take that. 44. Ah, oh, I thought it was more closer to the 32. Well, I banked that anyway, and if it keeps going down, I'm going to reverse again. So, yeah, I'm at 139.44 long. We started a little early, so we're getting close to our time. We're not there yet. Anyway, I think I, was, I grew up in the Bahamas, and my group of friends which was extensive from all the little uh, vill villages. I think I was in northern Andros, so it was uh, southern Andros, was San Andros, but where I was, all my friends were, it was in Nicholas Town. Um, and um, they, because I was uh, so tan, they, everybody thought I was Puerto Rican, so they called me the, uh, the little Puerto Rican. Did not speak Spanish at that time, so that was, that was nice. Here we go. Everybody's catching that. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna reverse off that, off that um, point of control. Maybe that was too soon. 
I feel like th this is a spinning top telling us it's going up, but that's a strong move down. I feel like we're getting a little pullback here on a possible continuation. That's what it looks like, but you know, you never know, right? So always assume it's going to go against you and already count that as losses <laughs> as it goes down. You already want to count the losses as it goes down, so or up or whatever the opposite of your direction was. That's how I got into is growing up there, got into salvage diving and treasure hunting and then made a business out of it as I got older, um, which was, you know, it was very lucrative, actually. <laughs> but it uh, it was. Uh, you might want to call it death defying, perhaps diving in blue holes where they were like the biggest uh, potential treasures were also the. Uh, the possibility of uh, instant death if you caught caught the tide wrong or often those blue holes you know uh, well i don't you'd have to look them up but uh, you probably don't understand what it, what they what i'm talking about but um which would be totally totally normal if you not to understand um wow is it going to break that but it's like it's like if you picture a drain on a kitchen sink where you have all this water that wants to go down and at the bottom there's a bigger hole wow uh, keep going. Let's go. Let's go. And then it starts to create the whirlpool, right? And that's what happened when happens when the tide changes on a blue hole. You have this perfect circular hole that's dark blue water at the top of on the Great Banks or whatever off of Andros. There's quite a few of them. And um, it's this perfect dark blue circle around, you know, pretty sandy banks that are only 20, 30 feet deep that look crystal clear water. You get in the when the tide, you try to get it. Um, when the tide's still bubbling up and swim against it because you only have about 20 minutes because when it flips, I'm going to take it here, guys. I'm going to take that. Actually, I didn't even want to reverse. I actually just wanted to get out. <laughs> so, but now I'm going, I'm going long again. Yeah, I'm going long again. I'm going to try to... Uh, we're near the end of our where we should be done. I'm just going to try to get out of this trade. Yeah, I'll just take that. So that's 73.64. Um, that was 29 minutes, I believe. Um, so if you wanted to, oh, boy, I'm glad I got out of that, at least. It's right at the ATR. So to me, that's a long move, guys. If you're still trading this and you care about what I say, I would absolutely, even though this doesn't look like it, I'd be taking a long position right here to ride it up to like maybe somewhere 39.50 or right here 39.87 or 39 you know right in here um at least at this level you know so but it might take a second there it goes still at 38 i forget what i was talking about oh the blue holes yeah so you you hold you put a big like four inch line down from the boat you have the anchors and like all these different positions you always leave the engine running because it, it can it can get so strong sucking down if you guess it wrong because there's so many uh, a vast amount of holes deep down They're, they call them bottomless but in the old days they said sea monsters drag down the boats and but it was it was it was the current. It was the effect of a blue hole. Could suck a giant ship right down, a big schooner, if they anchored there thinking they had a cool spot. and just suck them right down. And then the, the, the natives would think, oh, there was a giant squid or a giant monster that just pulled the boat down. But the boat just gets sucked down a big, a big drain because there's all these holes that are, you know, 100 times the size of the one on top. So it creates a suction when the tide changes. And it's right there on the edge of the... Um, tongue of the ocean where it's a straight drop off you know that goes down over a mile down and so fast it's like somebody cut a knife on a cliff you know like to make a cliff the trees grow out sideways as you're diving down and stuff so it's pretty scary but anyway that's where all the big fish are in the are in those holes so you'd set up the boat so it wouldn't get sucked down in case you guessed wrong you put the big lines in case you guessed wrong you always had a buddy dive diver you had put little telltales um, like pieces of string, 
you know, on you to see if, it's, if they're always turning down because you can kind of get lost as to what's happening. And then and a couple of times it was close where I was, you know, pulling up in that line as hard as I could. My mask was ripping off of me because, you know, and the boat is trying to keep up with it. And it's just like some scary stuff, stuff. But you get you could find really cool stuff. So being young and stupid, I just kept doing it anyway, guys. That is what the RV strategy looks like. Um, you know, I didn't have as much time to go into the details before we started, but, you know, all these uh, indicators are available um, for free. Um, these layouts are available for free. Everything here is community share with a group of professional traders and beginning traders and people. It's, it's, it's often from the beginning traders we get the best ideas. They're looking at the market in a brand new way, and they bring so much to the table with even just their questions. Um, so, you know, don't don't be afraid to ask questions and don't be worried about being ignorant if you don't understand this. Um, everybody is right where you are right now. Everybody has been right where you are right now at some point. Um, so just just you just got to learn. It takes it really takes a couple years. I know you want to know next month and be a millionaire just like I did. <laughs> How I want it to be. I mean, um, but uh, um, no, that is totally normal to want that. It's the ones that have the perseverance to stay the, the course one year, two year, three year, even sometimes four years. Maybe after four years, if you've been dedicating lots of time and you've just gone nowhere but down, you know, it might not be the best thing for you. And I hate to say it because I'm sure there's people that it took them six years. You know, um, you have to learn who you are. That's why trading in the zone, Mark Douglas, figure out who you are. The, there's technical analysis. There's fundamental analysis, which isn't really scalping, technical analysis is. And then there's mental analysis, which is definitely part of scalping. And Mark Douglas teaches that. So day trading volume one, trading in the zone, best loser wins. Those would be the first best books to start with if you want more than just watching videos. But they're all here, the videos about them. Um, and then um, the candlestick playbook, pattern playbook is real. It's just consolidating here, huh? <laughs> Um, I think this is this is interesting because this is either do if I wasn't trading a strategy right now, I'd basically call for this to spring. You know, it's either going to spring way down. But since it has all this support, I would take a trade. I'll take a trade with you guys if you want. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take a trade long right there. I'll take a trade long on this on this dip right here. Take, this is not part of the. I guess it will be part of this video. So I went longer. Uh, I'm just going to I'll just ride this to its next end, which I believe will be somewhere up here. I think it's going to spring off this ATR. It didn't break it. Now, if it starts to shoot down here really, really hard, I will get out, you know, and say, oops, oops. Yes, you can definitely be wrong. This would be the first time I was ever wrong. And if you believe that, I have some swamp land to sell you. I'm getting ready to get out. It's already a good trade. But I'd like to see if I can break AK here on this move, if it moves up enough. Uh, AK is what I'm going to call my my resistance line is AK. So it actually tapped there for a second, which is interesting. Um, you know, it, it respected that line. So it went higher than it's been going. So if you look at this little consolidation, it's like higher highs, you know. So it seems like it is about to go boom um, off this ATR. Magnets up here, remember. Pulling us up here. It's winning out on the uh, buyers have gone down. Now, I just looked at that for the first time. Um, well, it's kind of even, really. Ah! Did you see that? That was really annoying. Did you see that? Did you see how close I got to AK right there? That slipped. That slipped. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to stop right there. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to get subscribe and give us a thumbs up to share. Don't forget to watch all the other videos, but be careful out there. Always stay inquisitive and stay green and I'll see you soon.